How's it going everybody? Happy Halloween! My name is Emily and welcome back to my channel where I review, critique, and summarize scary children's books. Hey everybody! Happy Halloween! Like I said, it is October 31st, it is the spookiest day of the year, and I am here to tell you about picture books. <laughs> Last year I introduced you guys to six Halloween picture books. I'll leave the link for that video up here. And this year I have four Halloween picture books for you. Three of them are a little bit older and one of them is brand new for this season. So I'm going to leave that one till the end of the video. Make sure to stick around until the end if you want to hear all about that. As always in this video I will go through each book with you, giving you a brief summary of the book as well as a review. I'll let you know what I think of the story, the illustrations, etc, and why I think this is a great book to share with kids in your life that enjoy Halloween or to just read on your own because they're great. All right, so without further ado, let's just get into the books. All right, so the first picture book I have to share with you is Halloween Forest. This is Words by Marion Dane Bauer and Pictures by John Shelley. This picture book came out in 2012 from the publisher Holiday House. Halloween Forest is an unmetered rhyming picture book about a brave trick-or-treater that ventures into a dark forest in search of candy. And the book basically follows this trick-or-treater as they go through the forest and figure out that it is actually a forest of bones and is filled with these horrible skeletons. At the end of the book, the trick-or-treater has to decide whether they are brave enough to brave this forest of bones and get what they came here for, candy. So Halloween Forest is a sweet Halloween story with some killer illustrations. The narrative is straightforward and easy to follow. It's super spooky, the idea of this forest of bones. And of course, this isn't just a forest that has skeletons in it. This is a forest actually made of bones. The trees are made of bones. The ground is made of bones. The branches are made of bones. As you can see, I think the illustrations here really are the star of the show. I love how detailed they are. You can see every bone in every skeleton. And the trees are super interesting, how the bones kind of curve and interlink to make a tree shape. Something I really like is how light these illustrations are. You know, we see a lot of darkness in Halloween books, but this one is quite pale. It's almost bleached like a skeleton. And of course we can see on Recto here, here's the moon. So the night sky is actually still bright. Even though the trick-or-treater is alone in this horrible forest at night, it's still kind of bright out. So it's not quite as scary as it could be, which is always good for a picture book like this. My favorite illustration is at the back of the book here. Here's one of the final openings of the book. Look how cool that is. It's interesting to me how this whole book is filled with skeletons, but only the trick-or-treater is the human skeleton for their costume here. There aren't any actual human skeletons here, except maybe for the ones in the windows, but then again it's only implied. This helps to distinguish the trick-or-treater from everything else in the forest. It helps to give a sense that they do not belong here. This is a landscape that is completely alien. But on the flip side, it also kind of says how everything is made of bones. Even these creatures have bones, just like humans. So it's a kind of we're all the same inside feeling that I really like. So I love this book. I think the illustrations and the story are so evocative. This is perfect to share for kids who love Halloween and want something just a little spooky before bedtime. So that is Halloween Forest. So next I want to share with you Halloween Goodnight. This is a picture book, words by Rebecca Grabel and illustrations by Ella Oxted. This came out in 2017 from Athenium. The story follows 10 groups of spooky monsters that go to scare this little girl in her bed. But when they arrive, they realize that she is awake and therefore unscarable. The little girl reassures all of the creatures and comforts them and makes sure that they fall asleep peacefully on Halloween night. This book is so sweet and wonderful. It's really top notch. The writing is great. The poetry is so much fun to read out loud. Each page follows the same meter, so you really get a good rhythm going as you read. And even beyond that, there's a real mind given to how each word feels when it's said aloud, when it's read to somebody. And that, I think, is something that the best picture books are really concerned with. As a reader and as a reviewer, I really appreciate it. So I'll read you a few pages just so you'll get the idea. Lurking in the swamp land, lanterns glowing like the sun, sits a massive mama globster with her biddy globby one. 
Ooze drills the mama, while sluice drips the one, so they squish and they slosh through the muck toward the fun. Silent in the silo, on a dry, dusty floor, lies a wrapped mommy mummy with her bandaged babies four. Rise, moans the mummy. We're dressed, rasp the four, so they shuffle and they shimmy out the old creaky door. So as you can see, the illustrations here are vibrant, they're friendly. All of the creatures have smiles on their faces, making them seem really nice and well-intentioned. And I think that's really important for a book like this. At no point in the story does this book get scary, and I think that's what makes it a really nice Halloween bedtime story. It's not going to scare kids before they go to sleep, but it does deal with some spooky themes. I gotta say, on the first read, this book kind of made me weirdly emotional. There's something so sweet about this little girl at the end taking care of all of these Halloween creatures. So here she is. She's got all of them in her wagon, if you can see that. And look at her with the little mummies. So cute. There's something interesting on this last page here too. If you can see that, she's tucking the werewolves in with what looks like the physical page of the book. She's actually peeling back the image to tuck the werewolves in underneath. It's a meta moment that I really enjoy, and I think it says a lot about the intention of this book to lull the listener and the reader into a deep, restful sleep on Halloween. I can't recommend this book enough to parents and guardians that want to unwind on Halloween night with a Halloween-themed bedtime story. It's just gorgeous. All right, so next I would like to share with you guys a Happy Haunters Halloween trick or treat. This is Words by Debbie Lepinen and illustrations by Tad Carpenter. This came out in 2013 from Simon & Schuster. So a Happy Haunters Halloween trick or treat is a collection of Halloween themed poetry. Each page has a different short poem on it. Themes range from black cats to trick-or-treating to mummies. I like this book a lot and I will say though with collections like these it's always going to be a little bit of a mixed bag. So there are some poems that I really like and then there are some that leave me feeling a little uninspired. I have to say though the poems that are quality for me outweigh the poems that aren't. So I think that makes this whole book a nice reading experience and the nice thing about books like this is you can pick and choose. Those poems that you don't really like you can choose not to read and those that you do you can. I'll read you some of my favorites just to give you a sense because why not? All right so here's The Shadow. I was followed by something close, something dark and quite morose. Just my shadow, nothing to fear until I left and it stayed here. I like this one. Slick ride. Witches on broomsticks fly over treetops, except when it rains, then they use mops. Squeaky clean. There was once a specter named John who bathed from dusk until dawn. When he finally got out, he let out a shout, I've scrubbed so hard that I'm gone. Here's John. <laughs> I love the short, sweet nature of these poems. This is a book that you can pick up and put down as many times as you need. And that's always nice if you're having a hectic Halloween day, you want to do some reading, you have a kid that's too excited to listen to anything long form. Uh, this is great. The illustrations are super cute. They have a lot of detail. I have to say personally, sometimes with these kinds of illustrations, I don't really connect with them. But that being said, I could definitely recognize the artistry that goes into making something like this. And I think the illustrations are quite indicative of cartoons, actually. Um, animated shows for kids. So I think that'll be really good for kids who like that kind of thing. Kids will respond to this. So take a look for this book if you are looking for some Halloween poetry, something very short to read to kids this year. All right, and finally, without further ado, this is the brand new book for this season. This came out early September, I think. This is Dracula Spectacular. It's written by Lucy Rowland and illustrated by Ben Mantle. Dracula Spectacular follows the Draculas, a couple of vampires that live together in an old creepy mansion in the middle of a park. The book begins as the Dracula's new son arrives to them, a baby of course, and everything seems perfect. However, as the baby grows up, as their son grows up, the Draculas realize that he's not actually anything like them. He's not really evil at all. Instead, he likes to laugh and he throws tea parties for his teddies and he likes to wear bright, beautiful colors. But the Draculas really want him to be like them, so they force him to go out into the town to find a child to scare. But instead of scaring the girl that he finds, he actually just ends up befriending her. Her name is Rose. 
and that night they have a wonderful time together just exploring the town at night. But even though Dracula Boy has made a friend, he's actually sad because he knows that his parents will never allow him to have a friend. However, things don't really work out that way. When the Draculas see that Dracula Boy is sad, they realize that they need to be more accommodating of who he is. So they allow Rose to come over for a play date and they make him this beautiful rainbow cape to help him express what he loves and who he is. And the Draculas come to understand that they can love their their son, glittery cape and all. So as you can tell from my summary, this book has an absolutely lovely message. The tagline on the cover here reads, be brave, be kind, be colorful. And I think that really encapsulates what this book is all about. It's all about self-expression, celebrating self-expression in all its forms, even when that expression defies what is expected of us. I think it's really beautifully written and it does something that I find so important and that is use spooky themes and the idea of Halloween and vampires and ghosts and scary stuff in order to say something really healing, in order to say something wonderful. The illustrations are absolutely gorgeous and quite humorous as well. Here are the Draculas trying to teach Dracula Boy to be like them. And there's an absolutely gorgeous spread uh, towards the middle of the book where Rose and Dracula Boy are looking out over the city and just admiring the nighttime. And I really like this particular theme in the book because one, I think there are a lot of books that try to make nighttime feel really friendly for kids because kids can be afraid of the dark, so I really like that. But it also kind of has a dual-pronged function as well. The book, as I've described, is largely about Dracula Boy's parents, the Draculas, learning to accept Dracula Boy as he is learning to accept the non-vampire-like qualities in their son. But what I like about this little subplot with Rose when they go through and start appreciating the nighttime is that that shows that Rose appreciates Dracula Boy and accepts him for being a vampire, something that he has been resisting. She helps him see the beauty of his world, the nighttime that he has to live in by virtue of being a vampire. So I think the author and the illustrator show really excellently how Dracula Boy can kind of stand astride of the line between these two identities and how he can learn to appreciate both the fact that he is a vampire and the fact that he loves bright colors and loves to dress up and loves these certain activities that are just not very vampire-like. At the end of the book, he understands that he can express himself any way he likes, and he doesn't have to be either or, he can be both. And of course, he has some influence on the Halloween creatures here who start to embrace bright colors and happiness. So Dracula Spectacular is my favorite Halloween picture book that came out this season. I absolutely adore it. I think it's wonderful. It's, I think, my favorite picture book of the year, so there you go. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video. Those are all of the books that I have to review today. I hope if you get a chance to go to the library or go to the bookstore to check out these books that you will. If you're looking for Halloween picture books for this year or next year, these are absolutely wonderful buys or wonderful borrows. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like and let me know in the comments below what picture books you're reading to your kids this Halloween. And let me know if you have a favorite Halloween picture book that I should take a look at because like I I say I'm always reviewing picture books like this. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I will be here doing scary kids book reviews and videos like this for the future. And if you'd like to follow me on social media, my links are always in the description below. All right, guys, thank you so much. I am off to go eat some Halloween candy and maybe watch a scary movie or two. I'm excited. I hope you all have a very nice night as well. I will see you in the next video. And until we get to talk again, happy reading.